Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today we're going to be looking at a dynamic memory allocation in the C programming language. That means malloc and free and how you get all these different security bugs that we hear about all the time that happen because of buffer overflows or buffer overruns. We'll look into that because it's all part of malloc and free on uh, in the C programming language. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so in a C program, if you need to ask the operating system for some memory dynamically, let's say you're loading up an image file, you don't know how big it's gonna be when you write the program, so at some point you find out the size of the file and you say, hey OS, Linux, Windows, whatever, please give me three megabytes of memory so I can load in this image file and we can start doing something with it. And to do that, you need to allocate memory dynamically. Mem alloc, malloc is the function that allocates memory and returns a pointer to that memory from the operating system. Now, if you're not sure about pointers, I have a whole video on pointers in C. Do make sure you check that out before you carry on. Now, once you've finished using the memory, you don't need it anymore. You free the memory, you hand it back to the operating system and say, I don't need this memory anymore. Please go and use it for something else. So that's malloc and free. So what we do is we go ahead and start writing some very simple programs that demonstrate the very basics of malloc and free, and then also we'll look at some of the problems you can get with malloc and free. Okay, so here we are inside of a very, very simple program, and a couple of things to notice. First of all, it includes standard lib, because we need to have the definitions for malloc and free, and they are inside of standard lib. We basically print out a title, this is our malloc example one. We then say, we're gonna request some memory, and then here is our first call, to something related to memory malloc. So what we say is I would like at 1024 ca uh, bytes, that's 1K of memory, and malloc will return it as a void star. So a generic pointer, not to characters, not to integers, a generic pointer. And what we basically do is we get that memory, and then afterwards we free it. We say, okay, thank you operating system. I've You gave me that 1K, now I'd like to give it back to you. Very, very simple, in fact, very, very boring, but it shows us that we can ask for memory and then return it. So let's quickly compile that and see what happens. So we compile it with GCC, there we go, and now we can just run malloc1. There you go, request memory, free memory, very, very boring. Let's quickly move on to something a bit more interesting. So here I've got a second program, and again, we're gonna ask malloc for some memory, but this time we're gonna be dealing with strings. So a couple of important things to notice. First of all, the pointer is now char star, because we want this to point to characters, not to generic void, not to integers, not to floating point, to characters, and we need to cast it so that the void star gets turned into a char star. Okay, once we've got the memory, we check to make sure it wasn't null, because of course we could say to the OS, please give me 3.7 gigabytes of memory, and the OS comes up and says, no, you can't have that amount of memory, I don't have it, so malloc can fail. So we check that it's okay, and then we do a very simple thing, we say the first byte of our allocated memory, a whole 1K of memory, we're just gonna be dealing with one character here, I want it set to the letter A, and then the way strings work in C is that they are a set of characters, and that the end is a zero, which marks the end of the string. So basically we've got a string of one character, the letter A, and we're gonna print it out here with a printf, percent %s means string, print out this string, which is basically gonna be the letter A, and then once we've finished with it, we then free it up, and we say, okay, OS, thank you for that 1K, we've printed out our string, you can have that back. Okay, let's compile that and see what happens. So again, we compile it with malloc, that was, uh, with GCC, sorry, that was all okay, malloc 1A, there we go, I've requested some memory, I got the 1K, I then have this buffer, I've put the letter A in it followed by a zero, so that gives me this single character string, and then I free up the memory. So a very, very simple uh, manipulation of that memory we got. Okay, let's try something a bit more complicated. Okay, so in this program, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask for 64 bytes, and the reason I'm asking for 64 is we're gonna use a similar thing a little later on to see some of the problems that can happen. And then again, the same thing, we come into here, check that we got the memory, go into a loop now, we're not just setting one character, we're gonna set between zero and less than 32, which means up to 31. Notice 32 is well within our 64 bytes, even just about half of that memory, so that's not a problem. We're gonna set every single location between zero and 31 to the letter A, and at the very end there, we're gonna set the end of the string by putting in a zero, 
and then we print out the strings. And now rather than one A, we should get 32 A's in a row, and then we free up the memory. So this should again work. Let's compile it and see. So again, we compile with GCC. Yep, no problem at all. Let's run malloc 1B. And there we go, requested the memory. It got it back. We know we got it back because we checked for the null pointer. And then here we go, 32 A's all in a row. There's a zero at the end there, invisible that you can't see. Terminate the end of the string. Then once we finish, we give back the memory. So here you can see we've asked for memory, we do something in the memory, and then we give the memory back. Now the problem with C is that that's all great. We've been able to allocate the memory and do things with it, but it doesn't check what you're doing with the memory. You can do whatever you like with it, and it doesn't care. There is no checking to make sure that you're doing what you should be doing with the memory. It trusts you completely. It's kind of like, it's a very low level language C. It says, yeah, if you ask for that memory, you just, you knock yourself out. You go and do whatever you want with it. But the problem is you can do things you shouldn't do with it. For example, here, we allocate the memory and then we free it up again. And then a few lines later, we free it up again. So we're freeing up the same memory twice. We're saying to the C runtime library and ultimately the operating system, well, here is some memory that you can free up, but in fact, it's already freed memory. So should this program compile? Should there be an error when we compile it saying you've tried freeing up memory twice? Or if it's not when we compile it, will we run it? Will there be an error? Well, let's have a look and compile it and see whether an error comes up or not, because clearly we shouldn't be freeing the same memory twice. So let's try the compile. That worked okay, so maybe it won't work when we run it. Let's see, no, it worked absolutely fine. I requested the memory and then twice I freed it up and there was no error whatsoever. Now, of course, this is not a good situation and of course this can introduce bugs and we'll give you another example of that uh, in a moment. However, if you remember, I have a video where I went to Facebook and I talked to one of their engineers who works on an open source project called Infer. And it is a analysis program that looks at C programs to see whether they've got any memory problems. And I've installed Infer on this system. I'll leave a link to how you install it in the description below. And we're going to run Infer now to see whether it picks up this error. So the way you run it is Infer. And then, of course, you give it the C program. This is the important thing because it's actually going to compile the C program itself, do some clever things on it, and then work out whether it's a safe program or not. Let's run it. It's going to go ahead and do it. Ah, look at this. Error. Use after free. And it quite clearly tells me that here on line 20, I'm freeing it again, which I shouldn't do. So this program, Infer, is able to check our code and see whether there are any problems. C, the C compiler doesn't do it, and even running the C program doesn't do it. You have to use another tool like Infer, and there are others available, to actually catch this kind of error. So if you are writing any kind of good C programs, you've got to make sure you're using some other tools to make sure you haven't introduced some errors into your code. Now here's another example which does exactly the same thing, a free, and then we carry on using it, so a free, that we shouldn't do. So in this case, what's happening is we've got this function called fill buffer. You pass in a pointer. It fills in the pointer with this is a string. There's the pointer there, the S string. And then after we filled it in, we free it. Okay, OS, we don't need this memory anymore. You can have it back. But then we say, oh, actually, actually, even though I've said free it, I'm gonna use it. So you return S back to the main program. The main program has allocated 8K, and then here it will try and print out the string that is returned from the fill buffer function. Here's the fill buffer function. We pass in pointer, which is what we requested here from malloc. And it says, okay, you go ahead and do that, and then print out that string from memory that in fact we've already returned to the operating system. Surely this won't work. Surely the compiler will say, you can't possibly do a thing like that. Well, let's find out. So we're going to compile it with GCC, no errors. So the compiler doesn't care. The compiler does not care that you freed that memory and then you carry on using it. Maybe when we run it, it will crash. Surely, no, no, there we go. Request memory, okay, and then fill buffer returned. This is a string, even though this is a string, is stored in memory, doesn't even belong to us, doesn't belong to our program. It's been given back and yet we're still using it. Well, let's run infer and see if that can pick up this error. So here we are, we're going to run in first, same thing, you pass it the C code, it's going to do its work, there we go, null dereference, the pointer last assigned on line 19 could be null. 
And here we go on line 21, we see that in fact it's saying you can't do that. So it spotted the fact that, that memory was freed and returned to the operating system and then we try to use it afterwards, even though the compiler and running the program do not actually show that. And this is why you get these errors that occur in programs and you get security vulnerabilities and we get bugs because what happens is, is that the C compiler and the, when you run it, it seems okay. It's only in certain circumstances where that memory gets used in the meantime, gets taken over by someone else, whatever, that you can then get these clashes. On a simple running system where there's not much happening, well, we gave the memory back, but we used it because actually no one was using it anyway, so it didn't make any difference to us. Now, I've got one more example to show you that shows you this problem. So if you remember, we had a program where we allocated 64 bytes and we filled it with 32 of the letter A's. Well, I've modified that program now, so now it does 64 A's. So this is zero through to less than 64 is 63. And then we say, fill it with the letter A, and then at the end, we put in the zero to terminate the string, and then we print it out again. Now, this program is broken. Can you spot where it's broken? It'll be interesting to see. Can you spot it? Have a look. Let's see where the compiler can spot that it's broken. Let's compile it. Nope, the compiler doesn't have a problem with it. Okay, when we run it then, it will surely come up with some kind of error. We request the memory, we print out that I is 64, because we're putting in 64 A's. There are then the 64 A's, and then we free the memory. All worked perfectly well, nothing broken in it at all, but it is broken. Let's see whether infer can spot the broken problem, it's gonna do its stuff, no issues found. So I know it's broken, maybe you've spotted it's broken, the C compiler doesn't know it's broken, the runtime doesn't know it's broken, and infer doesn't know it's broken. Well, there are other tools available, so it's always good to use more than one. I'm gonna use one called Valgrind. You can install it from the standard repositories. I'll leave a link in the description below. So now we're gonna say Valgrind on my malloc4 binary this time. Is anything wrong with this binary when we run it? What happens, please? So let's see what it says. All right, here we go. It's saying something's happened. So let's scroll up a bit here to see where it's having a problem. It says this. It says invalid write of size one. Okay, and where's that happening? It's saying it's happening on line 23. Okay, and then it gives you loads more diagnostic invalid right size of one on line 23. So what could it possibly be referring to? Well, let's go down to line 23. What's that? Oh, pointer i is equal to zero. That's the end of our string. Why is that a problem? Well, the problem is this. Zero is the first element of the array, and we go to less than 63 okay, which is 64 in total, and that's the memory we've allocated here, 64 bytes. This is actually the 65th byte, and it's very easy to not notice that. The 65th byte, because zero to 63 is the first 64 byte, and then we're terminating the string in memory that doesn't belong to us. And again, C didn't care, the compiler didn't care, even infer didn't care, but actually, it was wrong because we're now writing over memory that doesn't belong to us. And again, if you can imagine, if you do this in a C program, you can start writing over all kinds of memory. And of course, you can actually get problems. You can write over memory you shouldn't be writing over and it can cause all kinds of problems. So for a string of 64 in C, you actually need 65 bytes because one byte is needed for the zero terminating the string. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not subscribe and stick around and join the community? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.